Hi everybody, I'm Nettie Kay. Welcome back to my studio. Now, uh, we're on part two today. We're going to try to finish up this beautiful painting that we got started. We put the background in. We figured out how to uh, do the, the bottle and add the little drawing of the apple so that we have somewhere to go. And so if you missed part one, go back and watch it. It's just a lovely little video that will tell you all about how to make these pretty colors in the background of this painting. Now, I want to emphasize we have a dark side over here that's going to help set off our light flowers. We're going to have some white flowers that are going to go off into this dark zone so that they'll pop out. If it was a white background in the background, you wouldn't be able to see the flowers. So you want that nice contrast. But as they come over here, they get kind of in shadow. And then we have a lighter background right here that's going to emphasize a little bit or give some contrast to the dark side of the flower. Isn't that cool? That's called Rembrandt lighting, if you remember from last time. I like to repeat myself every once in a while. And it's not because I forget that I already said it. No, it's because I want you to remember. And often it will take you about 14 times of hearing the same thing before you actually get it set in your brain as to uh, some sort of concept that I'm trying to get across. Now, uh, today there's a really important thing that I want you to figure out, and this is that every object, remember this, every object that you paint has got to have at least three tonal values, all right? Uh, if not five or upwards to nine, okay? But we're only going to be concerned with maybe three to five tonal values. What's a tonal value? Well, that's uh, how light or dark something is, okay? So we might start with a middle tone, something right in the middle. Let's see if I can find one. There is kind of a middle tone right here, a middle tone right here. And then we add lights and we add darks to them. And so if we have a, a middle tone, a dark, a light, and then we add a highlight and a cast shadow, hey, that makes for a pretty believable uh, piece of art. Yeah, it is. So every piece, including our jar, our apple, and our flowers, are going to have three, at least three to five tonal values. That's something that you need to remember in case I give you a test. Okay, so let's get going. Okay, well, now let's get our supplies out. I've got a little um, container of teal to start with. Uh, I have a, uh, let's see, i got to switch that one out. I've got a dark blue, and I have some yellow. So I have a light, a light yellow like this, all right? And I have a little red, and I'm going to put this one down. And so I have a yellow, a red, a teal, a dark blue, and a white. All right, that's what I'm starting out with. I'm going to take the lid off this white. And so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create um, a, uh, a, a the, this particular thing. I'm, gonna, I'm going to begin by putting in a middle tone, all right? And then we're going to add the darks, and then we're going to add the lights. It's often a really good idea to just put something in in the middle, add a dark and a light to it, and then you have something instantly that's going to be believable, believable. All right. So the first uh, color that I want to get to, I'm going to put in some teal. And that's a very, very intense color, everybody. So um, I think I want to add, uh, to make the color a little bit more accurate, I'm going to add some yellow to it. And it makes it kind of an interesting, kind of mossy, not mossy, but a, a kind of an intense green. Now that's really, really, really intense. Okay, so now I'm going to mute it down by adding a little bit of white to it. And that just makes a nice, wonderful little middle tone. I want to make sure it's not too light. Okay, middle tone, tealy, kind of minty green. And now I'm going to do something crazy and fill in this whole bottle with that mint green color. And i got to be careful. I don't want to go too much over the lines because I have an idea about what I want to do with those lines. So here's our mint green color. And so you can see where we had our little white. Uh, I, I drew the, You probably did yours in pencil. And that's what I asked you to do last time we met. So we're doing this in this interesting color. Got a little white on that, so it's already doing the light thing that I want. I'm going to come right up to that apple. And then we'll fill that in like this. Got a little bit of a bump here I don't like. There we go. 
That's what fingernails are for. I'm pulling that off. I want to make sure I don't add any extra uh, lights in the wrong spot. So we'll get this kind of a, an interesting little uh, middle of the road uh, greenish color. And then, uh, and I do want to remind you guys that uh, the uh, paint will dry darker than when you put it down because it's acrylic. Okay, so anyway, so here I have that. And so there's our middle tone uh, in middle tone green. Okay. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to add some um, a, a dark blue. This is a thalo blue. You can either use the thalo blue. There's another blue that uh, is in the next kit, which is called, oh, it's uh, primary blue. You can use primary blue. You can use regular blue. And then I also want to add just a tiny bit of yellow to that. Now you can add a darker yellow, but see how dark green that is? It's so pretty. Oh my goodness. Now I'm going to come around, and you might get your fingers in this. This is okay. But where we made those marks, that white mark, I want you to go very carefully. And sometimes what helps is if I'll put my finger on here to, to uh, stabilize my hand. And, and then I'm not using my wrist. I'm just dropping it from my, from my shoulder down. And then I'm going to go over our lines that we drew in the last time we met, okay? And it might take me a couple of tries. And it's okay if it's not perfect. And if it's too perfect, it just looks fake. So we want it to kind of look a little painterly. And I'm going to come up like this, and I'm adding a, a dark. If it's too green, add a little bit of blue. And uh, what I'm doing is, you know, glass has got this thickness to it. And the thickness is kind of dark around the outside. So now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do the same thing. All right, down on the bottom. Now, it doesn't look like uh, anything three-dimensional at this point, does it? So now I'm going to also come back in. I'm going to make the letter C at the bottom. You see that right there? I just drew the letter C. And then I'm making a little ellipse by doing that. And I'll just fill it in like that. Come over there. Okay. So now that's kind of uh, getting a little bit of a, a thing going on. And I want to see, uh, let's see, I've got, now I've got this, the dark blue and the yellow, like that. And now I want to put just a little bit of our original color into that. And we'll see what that looks like. Now I want to come over on this side. Before I do, let's, uh, let's also pick this up and go like this. I'm going to take, uh, at the neck of the bottle, I'm going to put a nice little, a uh, little bit of a jump rope there. Pull that around so it looks like it's not too flat. And then down here at the bottom of that shoulder, it's kind of that little crown. I'll put another one there. And then there's a few little uh, rings that go around the edge of the jar like this. I think I'll make this a little bit thicker right there. That's starting to come together. Good. And then I also want to come down here and I want to put in a water line. All right. So let's go put in a water, water line that goes like, like that. All right. Good. There's a water line. It's starting to look a little more round, isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay. Now, it's really kind of weird, but where, uh, depending on where the light's coming from and all sorts of stuff. Well, I've got light coming from over here. And so underneath this water, I'm going to now take some of this darker color and uh, tone, and I'm going to come down right about to the apple with a little bit of the darker color. Okay, a little darker color. And then uh, I'll put, I'll just kind of work it around a little bit. And then I'm going to add, I'm going to go back into our original mix so that it doesn't look goofy. And I'm going to just merge that in a little bit with a little bit of a squiggle so that I don't have just a big stripe or a big checkerboard. I want it to kind of make, make it look like it belongs there. And then I'm going to go back up into this dark color again, blue with a little bit of, uh, boy, what was that? Dark blue with a little bit of yellow. Oh, maybe I'm going to add just a little bit of teal this time just to make it a little bit interesting. And I want to come over, now it's kind of checkerboard this way, 
we have, uh, this is the light side, but for some reason this is dark. And then this is the dark side of the bottle. It's weird, but it works. So I'm gonna start up here and I'm gonna put in a kind of a darker side right there. And then a dark shoulder on the dark side of the bottle because the light's over here. And here's another one. This one's fairly thick. So we're gonna put a little bit of a dark shadow that comes down like this. And then, uh, well, I'll, let's just take it all the way down and we'll make some adjustments here in just a second. You can still see your water line. And then I'm gonna take some teal and come right next to it with the teal. In fact, I'm gonna overlap it a little bit with just straight the teal in our little mix over here. Put a little teal. So it's dark and then it comes up into a slightly different middle tone like that. And then I want to take some, <clears throat> some straight teal with just a tiny touch of blue. Yeah, teal with a tiny touch of blue. And I wanna come around the bottom a little bit like that. I put another letter C with that lighter teal at the bottom. Now don't forget you can stop the video and rewind it and watch it five million times, well not five million times, but you know, five times if you want. Okay, even more. All right, and so there we go. We've got kind of a, uh, this thing going on. Uh, we've got the middle green. And I also want to take some of that teal and now I'm gonna come on the inside of this line right to there with the slightly darker teal right in there, right in there like that. And I'm gonna go back in with our original color so that I can kind of blend it in a little bit. Just a tad. Play around with it and play around with it. And then, uh, you know, if you just kind of leave some little squiggly lines, uh, that really works really well, actually. It's uh, just one of those things that kind of makes it kind of um, look more like glass if it's not just filled in solidly, you know. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take some more white. We're gonna punch it up a notch. I'm gonna see if I can match this color as best as I can. Uh, let's see, so it's, it's pretty much just a lighter rendition of um, the teal with a tiny bit of yellow but not too much and a lot of white this round. All right, so now we're gonna come over here and I'm going to uh, right on the inside of this kind of right, right in the middle of that, I'm gonna go just one little stroke with it just slightly lighter. And then we're gonna come down and I wanna just go down past that line, just barely graze it, glaze it, graze it. And then I wanna put just a little bit of that light on the inside of that C. So I've got a dark green C, I've got a little teal C, and then I've got a little bit lighter on the inside and it's starting to look a little bit like it's supposed to, like glass. Okay, now, uh, another round. I'm gonna take another bit of teal with some white. Teal with some white, yeah. This is teal with white. Now, when light hits the glass right here, okay, I'm gonna put a nice highlight on that, but it's gonna hit there and it's gonna come out on the inside of the glass right on this side. And so I'm gonna come all the way up here. This is kind of weird, I know. And I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna drop it down, kind of like that. Now I'm gonna get really crazy and put some highlights on. All right, here we go. This time I'm gonna try just a little bit of white. And I wanna put, actually I wanna put just a tiny little stroke here. Not too tiny, but tiny enough. And then I'm gonna throw just, just, I'm putting my knuckle onto the canvas like this. It's dry, so it doesn't matter. And I'm just gonna control how much I put on, kind of like that. And then I'll, you know what a, a good thing to do would be is to take a Q-tip now and just kind of fuzz that out a little bit. And then I'll, I can take it and just go, and I break it up a little bit, break it up. And then I'll, I'll take this one and break up the edges just a little bit so it doesn't look like a big, you know, 
uh, what did Helen Van Wyck used to say, like a chicken with a highlight foot on, walked across it. It's just, there's a little fuzziness to the outside of that highlight right there. Okay. Now, I'm going to come back in. I want to put in, uh, let's see, where do I want to put another one here? Oh, just a little bit across here, like that, as that edge kind of comes out a little bit. And then I also want to put a little highlight right on the edge of this, all around. And I can mute it down a little bit later if it's too bright. I'm going to make this just a little brighter. A little bit there, a little bit down like that. That's looking pretty good. I find this so much easier in oil, you guys, but we're working in acrylic today. <laughs> I just want to want to show you it can be done. All right. Uh, and so now that looks pretty good as far as our glass, but I also want to realize that I want you to realize that there is a nice light uh, area. Oh, I forgot to do the ellipse on the water in the inside. So we're going to come in with this lighter color. I'm going to make another letter C. See that letter C right there? It's like the one down here and it's a lighter uh, tonal value. It's just a little bit of, or not not super light, but lighter than what's underneath. And then I'm going to fill that in with my filbert brush here. And I'm going to fill that in with a lighter value, a little bit like that. And then I'm going to come in one more time and I'm going to put a darker line underneath where the water line is, a really skinny one. All right, a little skinny water line right there. Yeah, that works. Take that dark and kind of drag it down a little bit. I don't want to get too, too uh, complicated for you because it can be. Boy, you can sit and stare at a bottle for a long time. Try that though, try that. Try sitting and staring at your bottle and going, what is really going on there? That's the way you really learn. <clears throat> it's one thing for me to say, well, let's just uh, fill it in with a color and add a light and a dark. That's helpful. But what's really helpful is if you can learn how to see it for yourself and figure it out. It's like doing a jigsaw puzzle sometimes. You just got to look at those pieces for a long time to figure out what shapes go with what. Yeah. So, all right, let's keep going. All right. Now, one thing that is missing, this bottle looks like it's completely floating. And so what we need to do now is we need to give it a cast shadow. That's really critical. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to uh, use my red, believe it or not, and I'm going to grab a little bit of blue and we're making that kind of dark, dark, dark purple. And I think at this stage also, I'll just use this dark purple for now. So uh, this is my bright red with a lot of uh, phthalo blue. And so now I'm gonna come up just about a half inch uh, up from the bottle right here and along the side of the bottle and then I'm going to come underneath the lower part of the of the bottom of the bottle. Don't, don't go over the top of your glass, uh, the thickness of your glass. And then you see this apple here is going to have a shadow too so I'm going to go ahead and create the shadow for our apple at the same time. And then I'm going to come out from that and drag it out like this, all right? So I've got this dark, beautiful purple shadow like that, and we'll take it straight out like this. And then I'll, I'm gonna just go, go, go. It's kind of warm today. I'm, I'm really pleased we're above freezing. Isn't that great? Okay, I know maybe hopefully in your neck of the woods it's a little bit less, less cold. We still have about two to, two to three feet of snow yeah, I'm not kidding. All right. Uh, now, you see I've got this purple shadow. What would me? What would be really cool, I'm going to wipe off, uh, I could rinse this brush off for a sec and wipe it off a little bit. And then what's really neat is if I have light shining through that, I wouldn't have a solid shadow. No. I'm going to add some of our green color, some of our little whatever up here color. And I want to just put in a couple of little, oh my gosh, isn't that great? A little stroke of that coming through so it looks a little bit like a little bit of green light is coming through. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Okay, now what's next? Okay, 
The next part is we are going to uh, go ahead and put in, base in our apple. Okay, we're going to base in our apple. And so I'd like to start again with our middle tone, and that's just our regular red. And I'm going to, it's extremely strong, so I'm going to put a little bit of our red into the center of our apple like this, like that. And I'm going to work it out a little bit. And then I'm going to add a little bit of our, our shadow color into that red. And I still want to make sure it's still red, but it has a dark, a dark value to it. So I've just added a bit of our shadow color to our red. Okay, there it is. That looks good. And then I'm going to look over here and say, okay, now in order for you to see it, I'll make it a little darker. Uh, I'm going to add the shadow color and I'm going to approach the edge of that with my brush and create the shape of this apple by doing this. You can see that shadow, shadow color on the, the back side of the apple. Now what I want to be careful with, and it's hard to do this in acrylic sometimes, is I don't want a sharp edge. So uh, same thing, I'm going to either take a, a rag or a Q-tip and I want to fuzz out the edge of that and uh, it might take me a couple times. So I'm just going to go around it so it, it doesn't have such a super hard edge that it creates a problem. I want it to look like it's round and going back into space. That one is a lot easier to do in oils. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, we can do it. We can do it. Now I'm going to rinse out my brush one more time before this gets too dry. Now I'm going to add, I'm going to do my bright yellow. Bright yellow over here. And then I'm going to get a little more red. And we're going to make, in essence, we're going to make an orange, okay? A little bit of an orange color. And then I'm going to put that orange into the lighter side of the apple and work my way out to the edge of that apple or the where the tone meets the background. I hate to say edge because apples don't have edges, do they? No, of course not. They have uh, an, a place where a tone meets a tone. That's what, what they have. And so uh, let's add just a little bit of white to that mixture and see what happens. And I'll see if I can find where the highlight is going to hit on that apple or the light hits. I'm going to just lighten it up just a tad. If you add just white to your red, what happens? Well, you end up with a pink apple. And that's okay if you have a pink apple, you know. So I'm going I'm to add a little bit more red back into it red as it goes around and then I'll just kind of merge it in together like that then I will come back in you know what I'm going to try I'm going to try a little bit of our mint green isn't that an idea okay I'm going to try it and I'm going to put that mint green wow that's very complimentary that's a, a really zingy zingy contrast instead of using just white I just threw in a little bit of that mint green into that highlight. And I'm just dragging it out a little bit like this. I think I'll put some up here too. So it looks like it's it's hitting that uh, edge of that, or the, uh, the area that sticks out on that apple. Sometimes it takes several layers, you guys. So, uh, you know, if it's not quite to your liking, just remember you gotta put a few more layers. I'm realizing this apple is still is sticking out just a little bit, so I'm going to extend the shadow out just a little bit. Doesn't that make that sit down? Yes, it does. Okay, now uh, I'll take a little bit of the red and uh, blue. It's just dark purple, and uh, you can use brown if you like, but then I'm going to make the little stem that sticks out like that. If I add a little bit of green to it, oh, let's see what happens. Yeah, a little bit of green. It makes it look a little bit more brown. And then I'll take my orange that I made over here and create a little bit of a knot on the end. Just hit it like that. Okay, that's not too bad, is it? Yeah, okay. Now, quickly, we've got to get going. We're going to do these flowers. Now, I know this is a little bit longer lesson for you today. And, uh, you know, you're big kids. All right, you can, you can handle it. So don't forget to watch till the very end this time. All right. Now, the next part is... Uh, we're going to 
do our flowers. And so that now I'm going to do another, uh, let's see, I'm going to go with the, the teal. This is going to be kind of a little bit weird. A tiny bit of blue, like this. And then I'm going to add quite a bit of white. And then just a touch of red. So teal, blue, a little tiny bit of red. That's going to make a nice lavender color. And I'm not beating the tar out of it, you know, again, like the hardware store where you shake up the paint. I'm just kind of keeping it marbled and interesting. And so now I'm going to come up here. And uh, actually, before I do that, I'm going to go back to my other plate. Sorry to confuse you a little bit. And I want to go back into my, uh, my greens a little bit. A little bit of my green so that we get more of a green stem. And we'll just kind of kind of drop that down. I think it needs to be a little bit darker too. This time I'm going to grab a little bit of the the, the dark um, mustard color and a little bit of the blue and see if I can get a little darker green. And I think I got to be a little bit more careful here and get this, uh, get this going down in like this. And I'm going to drop that. It's kind of messy, but I'm going to drop it down into the bottle too. All right, because it's going down into the bottle like that. I could make it even darker. That'd be interesting. Make it even darker. There. Okay. And then I'll put another one in. Where's that one coming from? Maybe it's way, uh, this one kind of comes way out like that. And then this one comes way in like that. And it might cross over and come down into the bottle like this. You drop it down into the bottle. That's a good thing. And then I'll put just a few little stems out here and there like that. Okay, so that's kind of the base of our, our flower so that we know where the petals are going to go. All right, so now I'm going to rinse that brush off one more time. Okay, back to our little purple. All right, now here's our purple color. Now remember, our, our lightest flowers are going to be over here, and then we're going to go into a little darker. But we're going to put, it, put this middle tone in to start with. And I'm going to I'm going to hold my brush a little differently this time. I'm going to hold it as though I'm I'm holding a stick, you know, to try to poke the ceiling. And so now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do this. I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to just put a couple little dots here and there and then maybe another one right here. And then I'll bring just a few little dots. I'm not thinking, oh, gee, I got to paint every little petal just right. I'm, I'm just creating a little, um, a little shape of a flower. And when we put the highlights on, you're just going to be shocked. You're going to be shocked. Now, this one doesn't quite feel like it's uh, a second stem. So I, I'm going to go back and fix that in a second. But I, I want to, um, so we'll just, we'll call this one the first stem, OK? And so each, as it comes towards the bottle, it gets a little bit wider. And so I'm going to put out, we'll add some more stems as we go. We'll just put the flowers in to start with and see how far we get. It doesn't have to look like, you know, the flowers that we've got here. You can make your own flowers any way that you like. I'm going to darken this up, however, right now. A little bit more red and blue because I'm coming into the light side. So now I want to make these darker. Ooh, that's a pretty color too. But there are supposed to be white flowers. So, and I'm going to make these petals just a little bit bigger like that in that bluish lavender color like this. And let's make them just kind of go right over the side of the bottle. That's fun. just kind of gotten into this particular style of, of painting, and uh, I'm enjoying it a lot. It's just a lot of fun. OK, now we'll come back in, go a little bit lighter. And I want to do a second, uh, actually a second little stem. So let's, uh, let's get that established first, because I realized this stem just did not look like it was doing anything. So back into my little green. And I want to make a second stem that's, that's just kind of coming out like that and in there like this. Okay, there, that's better. We'll, we'll just get it going out this direction like that. 
Okay, now drop that again. Back into our middle tone flowers. Isn't that interesting? That's the same color as that. No kidding. All right, but let me show you. I'm on here. I've got this purple on my brush. And here is the that color, that tonal value is the same. Watch what happens when I put it over here. <laughs> it's the same, you guys. It's the same, only it's the difference is because the background is dark and the background is light. Try that one at home. Yeah, try and see what happens. Look at that. Same color, same color, same color, same tonal value, and there it goes. I'm going to end up with so many flowers, it's going to be crazy, but that's all right. I'm enjoying this part. And now we'll come out. I think we'll just keep adding a few more out like this. That always blows my mind because even if even with my trained eye, I would not be able to tell that that was a different tonal value if I were to look at it and examine it without isolating it with a little piece of paper with a hole cut out, you know, and holding it over the top. I wouldn't be able to tell that that's the same value. It's just one of those things. Okay, now that's the beginning. Now the next part we're going to add, so we've got our dark, our light, our middle tone right here. And now I'm going to take some more white. I'm going to take some white and I'm going to add a little bit of, now this time I'm going to add just a tiny touch of this uh, raw sienna, just a little bit. You can add yellow if you want, that might work too. And I'm going to just add a tiny touch of that raw sienna and I'm going to mix that into a really nice light white with a little uh, flavoring, all right, a little bit of kind of a cream color. Now at this stage, I'm going to come back up and I'm going to find where the light is hitting it, okay? So I'm going to find the lights hitting right there, like that, and then I'll put a little, little light on one side, and I'm leaving that middle tone on that other side, like that. And so anywhere where I think I see some light, I'm putting a little tiny bit of a, a light petal there. Isn't that just beautiful? It's so easy. You just put those petals on. You, you know, you're not fussy with it. You're just putting a few little petals here and there, stretching them out a little bit, pushing them around. And don't cover everything up. You know, don't cover up all your middle tone or your dark. You want to make sure you, you keep some of that sticking out a little bit. Right? Okay. And back down in here, we're doing the same thing. A couple little petals. Wow. That's nice. And now I'm going to, you know, I think I want to add just a tiny bit more of that yellow to it. Just a little too white for my liking. So now I'm going to add some, some of that, more of the yellow. So it's, it's a little more of this tone rather than that as we come into the middle of the flower because it's going away from the light. Okay? So now, this part, as it goes away from that focal point right here, is going into, oops, I got a little bit too much of that white. That's okay, it's still kind of over here too, so I'm going to darken it up a little bit with the, with the um, raw sienna brown color, and I'm going to begin to move my flowers in that direction, just the indication of that, that warmer, darker color tonal value. Okay. Now, let's see. How are we doing? We're going to put just a little more on here, a couple of these, and then these kind of come out over the edge. These are kind of little abstract flowers. That's fun, isn't it? Maybe a little bit up there. Oh, uh, let's see. They aren't really on here. That's the funny part. I just made those up. That's okay. Now you can make them as, uh, you know, as accurate as you want. That's not a big deal. I'm just kind of giving you this idea of, of how to do this. And, uh, and you just can make it more as detailed as you like. Now the next thing I want to do is put the centers in the flower. And now we're going to add our darks, our really, really dark darks. Okay, so we've got a light, we have a middle tone, and now I'm going to add some dark. And here's the dark this will just instantly make it appear as though it's got 
a center to some of these little flowers. So you decide where the centers are. Some of them might be turned, kind of tilted downwards a little bit. And I'll put a little bit there and there, here, maybe a little bit there. And then uh, some, let's see, right there, there's one. There's another one, here's one. There's one. Nice, super, super dark over here as they go back into space a little bit. Okay, now I'm not going to paint uh, my table all the way across. I'm just going to give it the indication that there is a table. Uh, let me show you. Okay. Uh, first thing I want to do is I'm going to make some more of that light color that just has the raw sienna. Okay. And let's see if we can get an indication of some sunlight. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my brush this time and come up right next to the jar above that shadow and I'm going to go like this. All right. And I'm going to push it right up next to that and pull it. You could use your sponge brush for this, everybody, if you want. Might work. And come out kind of straight like that. And then uh, I want to make sure that it's coming out. I'm going to put a little squiggle of that right in the middle here. What? Yes. And then around that, kind of like that, so that it looks a little bit like there's some table behind it. Okay. And then I'm going to go, let's find where that table goes like this. Kind of like that, a little bit like that. And then I'm going to take it like this. It's a little too skinny for me to mess around with just making a big wild brush stroke, but I'm going to try. Put a little, put a little stroke like this. I want to put some masking tape on this one. Okay, and then I'm going to come underneath that like that. Maybe just a little bit in front of the, the apple, just a tiny bit. Like this. Nice and loose. I'm not going to fill the whole canvas up with the table. In fact, maybe I might even try rubbing some of that out just a tiny bit so it looks like it's what we call vignette. There. I'm just going fast and lifting that brush up. Okay, I'm going to just mess around with my table for just a few minutes. I'm going to come back and uh, take a look at it and tidy up a couple of little spots here and there. I'm going to show you what it looks like in the very end in just a moment. So. Hang tight, everybody. Okay, I put a few little finishing touches on there. Added a little bit of that kind of gold color to the table. I like that. It kind of warms it up a little bit because the flowers are nice and cool and the background's pretty cool. So uh, anyway, added that. Uh, got a little bit of highlights on. Added a little bit more of the dark flowers over here. I really had some fun playing with it. So I hope you will too. You can decorate it up in a lot of different ways. You can do your table in different ways. You can make your flowers a different color even if you like. So now, next time we meet, we'll be doing a really nice landscape. And I hope you'll join us for our second canvas uh, coming up next week. So thanks you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye for now.